here with Elements Bath and Body. I am going to be trying a melt and pour soap uh, today and showing you how I get through this process as an absolute beginner. Um, when I say I'm with Elements Bath and Body, I am with them from a technical standpoint. I work uh, helping out with their social media and also online and really I'm a computer bird. So doing this sort of a project is absolutely new to me. I do love being creative, but I can say that I have never made anything like soap before. So I'm starting with one of the really basic tutorials that um, was created for Elements by Terry Ensley of Tree Marie Soapworks. And um, I've printed it out here. I love that we have a little handy uh, printable PDF. So we can also look at it online, but I'm choosing to do this for it. I'm gonna follow her steps with a basic uh, melt and pour soap recipe. Um, in this tutorial, she actually uses the crinkle cutter and does it like a loaf style, but I'm gonna be using some of these cool silicone molds. Um, I saw some of them and I thought that they looked really cool. So when I decided that I was going to try out one of these tutorials, I thought, why not make a video? You can all come along with me on the journey and uh, let's hope that I don't mess it up. But I've been encouraged by the awesome team at Elements Bath & Body that I can do this. So if I can do it, so can you, even if you haven't done one before. So uh, we'll get started in just a minute. All right, so as noted, I'm gonna start with this uh, handy little printable PDF. So I've laid out all of the materials in front of me here. For me, I just wanna make sure I have everything I need before I get started. The one important thing that I've learned <laughs> in reading these tutorials is everything that I use for my soap making is sort of now dedicated to that. So I actually went out and I bought um, a cutting board just at the dollar store nearby. Uh, and then also same with the spatula. I had an old knife uh, that I didn't really need anymore, so I'm using that. But once I use it for this, I can't carry it on and chop up my knees with it later. So that's all dedicated now for my hopefully newfound joy in soap making. I'm gonna get things sort of moved out of the way and we'll start on, I believe, chopping up our soap base. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out the amount of the base that I need. And I'm actually gonna be doing three different batches because um, I've got the three different molds that I grow to you and three different colors. Um, so I'm gonna be separating them into three different batches. Each batch, according to the tutorial here, is 21 ounces. So this one here says I've got 16.61 ounces. So I'm gonna need to add to that a little bit. There we go. We're at 19.86. I am at 20.81, so literally probably close enough, but I like to be as precise as possible with my projects. I think this is one of the things that I quite like about what I know of melt and pour or have heard is that it is very forgiving and quite easy to work with. So there we go. We have 21.02 ounces. I'm gonna let that slide. I'm gonna put this excess bit over here and get to chopping it up. Now, Terry had suggested in her tutorial that um, we use a bit of uh, wax paper on the cutting board so that it doesn't really stick and it's a little easier to transfer it into the funnel. And that actually makes a lot of sense to me because we can just sort of pick it up and dump it. So I pre-cut a few pieces here to work with. So when I'm looking at this, it just says to cut the soap roughly into half inch pieces. So I'm hoping that these little bits that I've uh, created here <laughs> are forgivable. Uh, I'm assuming they are because we're gonna melt this in a minute. So I'm gonna just do some rough cuts. Chop those up. So you don't probably wanna watch me cut all this because I've got a whole other block to go. So I'll come back and uh, show you the next step in a little bit. All right, we're back. I chopped it all up. It looks a lot like there's more here than I was expecting, I gotta be honest. Um, I'm gonna move it into the pitcher. Um, I'm gonna just take some sort of handfuls here. Um, I can totally see why it's recommended to use wax paper or parchment paper on the cutting board, because this base is actually quite sticky. I was actually not really expecting that. So I really get that uh, the use of that paper for sure. So I'm gonna take this now, and it says that I should microwave it for 30 seconds at a time and then stir uh, in between each 30 second intervals. And then when it's all really nearly melted, then we're gonna go to 10 second intervals. So um, 
I'm nervous about stirring it. But I gotta be honest, it's feeling really full to me. Okay, wish me luck. I'm gonna pop it in the microwave. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna close her up. We're gonna go on 30 seconds. I'm using my knuckle because my tips of my fingers are a little bit sticky. You don't have to wait 30 seconds. I'll be right back. All right. We're going to pop it open and see what happens. Hey, no spillage. So that's awesome. So I'm just going to double check here. We're going to stir in between. So I'm going to pull it out. And yeah, this does actually work perfectly well. So it's just, uh, I'm going to say, it's going to be tricky to stir in there. Now, one of the things that was recommended is a chopstick. For stirring and I am currently looking at this and going ah that's why you follow all the instructions of the experts Mary because they know what they're talking about <laughs> I thought oh it's fine I've got a spatula but I can see right now that that uh, chopstick would come in handy so I pumped it around a lot it hasn't moved a lot so I'm gonna put it back in for another 30 all right so this is our second round of 30 seconds I can definitely see more melting has happened for sure. Oh, that's getting a lot easier to stir it up. I can see why the chopstick was recommended for sure. We're going to go for another 30. All right, so I took it out. Now that was my third 30 second interval. It's much, much, much more liquidy now, but there's quite a chunk in the middle. So I'm just sort of mixing that about. I feel like I'm, I can almost chop it up a bit. So I don't know if that probably might have been better if I had the chopstick to do a better initial stir up or what, but we're gonna see. I'm just gonna do this for a little bit. All right, so I stirred it up a little bit there. I got some of those clumps out. It's actually starting to get a bit gummy. Um, so not sure what that means, but I'm gonna put it back in now. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna head to the 10 second interval bit. vigorous stirring and I'm hoping that that's okay. Uh, I was just finding that it was still quite clumpy um, and so I wasn't really, uh, that wasn't making sense because uh, I want to be able to get the colorant in there and stuff. So it says just barely melted. I'm wondering if I maybe went a little over that um, but I've got sort of that consistency. It's gluey is where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna run with this and we're gonna add in uh, our colorants and our fragrance at this point. So step two is to add the fragrance and or essential oil. So for this one, I think I'm gonna go with these cool sort of massage bars. I think that we're gonna go with the blue for that. So I have the crystal blue colorant here and then um, for that one, I think I think that the tea tree would go nice as well. So we're gonna do a tea tree scent and a blue colorant. Now it's saying that we add the amount that we want. It says eight drops of this is good. Uh, that's what they used in the tutorial here, or Terry did. And then we're gonna stir it in to incorporate it. And then if we need to go do the 10 second intervals to keep it sort of moving, we're gonna do that as well. So let me see where I'm at. See, it's starting to harden already a little bit. So I'm going to throw it back in and then we're going to add in the color. Timer just went off. I'm going to give it a little stir. It does definitely solidify quite quickly. Um, so you definitely have to keep it moving. I'm going to just set that aside. And so eight drops of the colorant. So it comes in that little handy drop a bottle, but I don't have to measure it, I just drop it. So one, two, three, four, six, seven. Oop, that was like a double one. We're counting that as eight. And then we're gonna mix it up. Ooh, that is a pretty blue. So Terry in her tutorial used the clear melting core base, and I'm actually using the white base. So 
I think the trick here is really just making sure you incorporate the color really well. I'm actually at this point going to add my uh, scent in as well, I think, um, just while it's still sort of pliable, because I can tell that I'm definitely going to need to pop it in the microwave again. I just scraped off bits off this, so it's looking a little bit chunky. I'm gonna put that in, then I'm gonna add in my scent. All right, so I microwaved it a number of times um, just to try and get the right texture, uh, as you've noticed. And I've incorporated the coloring in as well as I can. Um, there's still a few little lumps and bumps in there, but whatever. We're just gonna go with that. Um, I don't, I don't foresee a future in which there will be none. So um, when I look at Terry's pictures, they're beautiful and they have no lumps. <laughs> but I just, I just don't, I don't see how I'm gonna do that. So anyway, so I've got it almost lumpless, and uh, honestly, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So um, it's nice and blue throughout. It's a very pale blue. I could add more color if I wanted it more vibrant, um, but I'm actually quite happy with this. So I'm gonna set this aside for a second. We've got the tea tree oil that I'm gonna add. I've got a little pipette to measure it, but it just shows like in mills. And this is like an ongoing issue when I'm talking to people actually on like Facebook and social media support, that sort of thing. And I always have to bug uh, Tammy, who um, is the owner of Elements Bath and Body, uh, to every time I'm like, please help me. How do I get the weight versus volume and all of that stuff again? So it's a common uh, question for people and a lot of us get lost so I don't feel terrible being one of the people. So in here it says that I'm gonna be using 0.4 ounces. So I'm figuring the best way to do that is I'm gonna just set this uh, there. I'm gonna put my base on there. So I'm just gonna go nice and slow um, and see what happens here. Nothing, ooh, 0 0.04, but we want 0.4. So I'm just gonna keep going here for a little bit. Oh goodness, we're gonna uh oh, newbie <laughs> mistake. Now we're at zero again. Now I happen to remember that we started at 22.79. Oh, it's, what's going on here? Okay, I'm a little bit nervous about this. Oh, it's 0 0.04, it's showing that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like, I'm really nervous about putting too much of this in. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I'm gonna just try a tiny bit more here. It's not changing. I'm hoping that I didn't just go overboard with this. I'm going to decide to just say, maybe that's enough. All right, so I'm gonna stir this up a little bit, get things moving along, and then we'll pour it into our molds. See you in a sec. I've added some more microwave time. It is a nice, liquidy sort of consistency. Um, it's gonna be easy to pour. So let's get to it. This is the mold that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna, just to keep things nice and tidy, I'm gonna put that onto my cutting board here. So we're gonna just pour. I'm assuming that it's gonna go right to the top of each mold, but just in case, I'm sort of making sure they all got the equal amount of love here. Oh, I got a little skin forming, but I think that's okay. Ooh, that's a glob. I'm okay with that. That's just happening. We'll find out what that turns into later. So yeah, we'll go right to the top, I guess. I've got enough. I'll probably have a little excess here, but not a ton. I think I can put a little more on this one. Okay, so in um, Terry's tutorial, she points out that we'll have these little bubbles on top. And so that's when we use the rubbing alcohol. So this is just straight rubbing alcohol in here. We just, we just spray it. Get the bubbles off. So I'm gonna just do this on the top to get rid of bubbles, is what we're doing. Oh yeah, you can see it sort of pops them. I think I still have a few bubbles here. I don't know, I don't think bubbles are bad. I think that's more just a uh, choice whether you want to have it absolutely perfect or not. Given that it's just me, I'm okay with it not being perfect. So I've done that. There. All right, looking. I think that they're gonna be pretty cool when I'm done. I'm like, 
high five me, I made the little pores out. So uh, it says that it's easiest if I leave it 12 to 24 hours before popping it out. So I'm gonna do that and then I will share my masterpiece with you. And then I'm also gonna make the other colors, uh, but I gotta wash everything up and I won't drag you through that, but you'll see the end product. All right, see you later. All right guys, I'm back. Uh, yesterday I made my very first melt and pour soap. It was pretty fun actually, and I'm looking forward to doing it again. I definitely did run into a couple of hiccups, but I didn't really know 100% what the texture should be for pouring, and I wasn't 100% sure on the weight or the measurement uh, for adding the fragrance. You witnessed that. Um, and then I think, because I'm recording along while I'm doing this, I'm thinking that maybe some of the pauses I'm taking to talk um, aren't ideal for creating melon pour. Um, because I think that it was thickening up more because I was taking time to do that. And potentially, that had to do with the fact that I didn't get these really lovely finishes, the tops, or I guess it will be the bottom of the soap. I did use the spray. It didn't seem to pop the bubbles, but I think it was because it had been sitting too long and already sort of started to harden a bit. So, ta-da, this is the fun moment. This is what we're all waiting for, right? It'd be great I'm, I'm the raveling of and revealing of the soap. So these silicone molds are great. They honestly just sort of pop right up so this is the first one, and you just sort of pop it out, and there we go. I made soap. That's pretty exciting. I'm pretty happy with that. You know, I could use, um, Terry had mentioned in her tutorial that um, when she does the cut loaf, she uses a vegetable peeler to bevel the edges, and I'm seeing that on even this one, I could probably do that along the bottom edge as well, just to soften that. But I'm pretty stoked about this, I gotta be honest. I didn't know I could make that, and I did. So, we'll get them all out here. So I had a little hiccup on this one. This one lost a little nippy bit. And I can see, it's actually quite apparent, that I just didn't do a good enough job of pouring into there. It would have been, a, it would have been hollow. So I literally have, on the first time I've ever made anything like this, I think I've got three really good soaps. Boom, and boom. One with a little bit of character, let's say that. And these bottoms, I don't know. You know, they're not exactly smooth. I'm gonna bevel the edges with um, a peeler. But it almost gives it a little bit of that homemade flair, right? I am going to be making the uh, other molds that I have, the flowers. And in different colors. So when I have those all together, I'll make sure that I show you those as well. And uh, we'll come back for that and tack it on to the end. All right, so here we are. We've got the three different versions that I did. They're all using the Mountain Core base. They're all using the same tutorial. Really the only addition between the different ones was a little more confidence each time. <laughs> so I figured stuff out. I felt a little bit more like safe sort of playing with it, putting a little more color in it, maybe like microwaving a little bit differently because I realized my microwave was a little cool. The first ones we already unmolded and uh, I popped them right back in here just to keep them together. But the tops, not beautiful, <laughs> quite lumpy. But these are the ones that I did first. I think that I really was struggling with melting it enough. So I learned that lesson and I also was taking my time didn't spritz it quick enough right after I put it down, but it was definitely a little bit thick. So we had that. So then number two was the orange one. And this one is the one that we did the recommended amount of fragrance oil in. Um, whereas in the tea tree one, I went way under. Okay, so we're gonna unmold attempt number two. Look how pretty. Oh, that smells yummy. Again, not a perfect bottom. So actually what happened here, you didn't see this on tape. What happened there was I tried to move this very wobbly um, mold right after pouring. Don't do that because it just sort of jiggled everything and made a bit of a mess. So that is not something that I recommend doing because that actually these ones would have been pretty perfect had I not done that. So this is a cool mold because it's got a few different flower types. And so yeah, when you're pouring your mold, make sure that where you got it is in the place you're going to leave it that 12 hours. The other option would be to do it on a tray 
that you can then relocate. And then this was the one that we didn't have quite enough to fill, but no big deal, right? It's just a little bit more shallow than the other ones. You can see, but it's really pretty. So now the perfect ones. They're so shiny and perfect on top. I'm pretty impressed with this. So all this was was the exact same tutorial. Just did it a few times so I got my confidence built up. Look at that. It's like a professional soap. Like seriously. Remember, this is not something I do. So I am so excited. Definitely you can do this. I think that if you are watching this tutorial, watching me sort of stumble and gain my confidence and figure out what was feeling a little bit scary to mess with in the tutorial a little bit might help you out to do a better job than I did on my first attempt. So yeah, look at this. These are beautiful. Look at the back of that thing. I'm pretty impressed. So let's do a comparison. This is the first one. This is the last one. That's pretty, pretty amazing. But even these ones, they, they look beautiful. Check it out, people. I made Mount Pour Soap and they're pretty. Thanks for watching me learn to make Mount Pour Soap. I did it. So can you. Cheers, guys. Thanks, you guys, so much for being a part of me trying out my very first Melt and Pour Soap. I'm hoping that watching me sort of go through everything was helpful for you if you're trying it for your first time as well. Um, I decided that it would be helpful to put some notes at the end here um, addressing some of the hiccups that I encountered along the way. I reached out to Terry Ensley of Tree Marie Soapworks who does tutorials for Elements Bath and Body as well as Tammy Tivis who owns Elements Bath and Body and both of them are sort of the gurus in this area that I like to lean on when I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, they helped me to answer some of these questions that I had and um, we'll just go over them really quickly here. So the one thing that I really did learn on my own actually was that not all microwaves are the same. I definitely needed to increase the time from what was um, suggested in the tutorial, but you'll have to figure that out a little bit on your own with your microwave because they're all a little bit different. But what we're really aiming for is um, a well-melted sort of fluid-like texture. Terry suggested that it should be a bit thicker than water, but a little bit thinner than syrup. So take that for what you will, play around with it, but it does need to easily pour without clumps. And I did not really fully understand that when I was doing my first one. And it was a lot easier to do once I did. So uh, I hope that's a helpful note. Um, also, Scales are great at measuring a lot of things, but tiny quantities, some of them struggle with a little bit. So I was, you know, while well, you saw that, that was not an easy part of the tutorial for me to try and figure out. And I hope that you have a better time with that <laughs> than I did. But uh, when it comes down to it, every essential oil and fragrance oil is sort of a little bit unique. And it's probably helpful to look up in advance what uh, the suggested use for different essential oils and fragrance oils are. Um, some of them are a lot stronger than others. So um, having that sort of figured out a little bit in advance and then actually working to measure that out prior to starting your soap making process is something that would probably be a little bit helpful. And I would do that next time myself. Uh, so it's sort of, you know, it's a suggested amount, but there is definitely room for movement on that depending on the fragrance and also just personal choice. And then also, when I was filling the molds, uh, you'll have noticed that I was sort of going in layers. Well, I guess not in layers, but I was not filling it all the way to the top uh, the first time I went around because I wanted to make sure I had enough for all of the molds. That actually didn't work as well because it starts to form a little bit of a skin on the top of the soap. So I recommend actually, after having done it now a couple of times, to just fill each mold right to the level that you want it to be filled to and then don't go back in and top it off. It's not like you can't, but it seemed to work a little bit better if I just committed and filled it right to the top. Um, and then you can use that rubbing alcohol to spray off those bubbles before it sets because it does form a skin pretty quickly after you start pouring it. So that was definitely something that I, I got better at as I tried. And by the third time I was doing it, it went really, really well. So I suggest that. And then ultimately just really be patient with yourself. I, my first time going at it, I was getting a little bit frustrated thinking I should be doing better and, you know, trying to figure out what I was doing wrong because especially with the texture, I didn't have that 
quite right. And um, after doing it a couple of times, you can see it was a totally different product by the end. So just give yourself, you know, some patience and understanding and go with it. And hopefully you'll maybe do a little bit better your first time than I did. But uh, yeah, thanks so much again for being part of this. It was super fun. And I hope that you enjoy making your melon pour soap.